everybody and welcome back to the Healthy Orange Movie Reviews, the show where we bring you film criticism that is honest, insightful, and not least of all fun. I'm your host Bennett Campbell Ferguson and I'm joined by Allie Bolt. Hello and welcome to the Tipsy Horn. <laughs> And Mo Shawnette. We're filming in a public place again. Nothing Yay. can go wrong. <laughs> and Patrick Bellin. Can you hear me? There's music playing in the background. <laughs> I can hear you. We'll see in post, though. <laughs> Put it in subtitles. Fix it. I'm Maxwell Myers. Tipsy Orange, I got water. Why wasn't I informed? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just saw Spectre. The new James Bond film. <laughs> so let's uh, let's all go around and just uh, briefly say what we thought of the movie, starting with Allie. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it gave me whiplash at a couple points um, because they were trying so hard to be the serious Winter Soldier surveillance state, but also keeping a lot of the campiness of the earlier Bond <laughs> movies. So. It, kind of went back and forth a little bit too often for me. They never really fully committed to one or the other, but it was it was fun. It was a fun, loud movie. <laughs> Mo? Um, I thought it was really uneven. I thought it was really messy. Like, it, it felt like they had a lot of good elements there. They had a, a really stellar cast, and they didn't use them to their full potential. Like, Daniel Craig, he's always on. He's, he's always there. He knows how to do this, but... Christoph Waltz, uh, uh, Lea Sado, uh, 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 Monica Bellucci, uh, Dave Bautista, these are, they could have been great, but they're unfulfilled potential, it felt like. But the action was decent, music's good as ever, cinematography's pretty good. Um, it's, it's okay. Yeah. All right. It's very wishy washy. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Some I, I it's sometimes it's true. <laughs> it <was> okay. <laughs> Patrick. Hey, uh, I, I agree with you. There's uh, some interesting elements going on. There's a lot of unfulfilled potential. Generally, I would say I did not like it. Um, it has a lot of the same problems that Quantum of Solace had. Um, in my opinion, Bond comes alive when he has interesting uh, uh, enemies to deal with, as in the first one and uh, the last one, Skyfall. But this one. Uh, you know, Waltz's character just wasn't all that interesting to me. So there wasn't a, a whole lot for Bond to really bounce off of. Uh, well, there, there's more I could say about all of this, but in general, I would give it a two out of four stars. All right, Max? It was okay. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think a lot of the problems have been addressed, a little uneven. At times, it was trying to feel kind of classic Bond while also trying to try to push the envelope kind of like the last one like I felt like when I was watching this and more Skyfall this morning and I was like this one has a lot to do with computers again it's all about computers whatever happened to the man that just wants to blow up the world <laughs> I know it seems old and easy to fix but come on that's what I like um yeah, a lot of, unu like, I didn't even realize until they said, I'm like, yeah, I guess a lot of the characters were kind of not used to their full potential, but can I just say how much I love Dave Bautista in this movie? <laughs> it's bringing back the classic villain henchman with crazy body something that does something terrible. <laughs> oh, I he, has to silver, he has silver, silver nails. Paint. No, it's clearly blades on his fingers for gouging out people's eyes. And, it's, it and I, like that it's like, I like that his audition was, what is your rebuttal to this person's claim? I will smash his head in and I will gouge out his eyes and leave him dead on the table and then I will take his I will take his seat and that is my that is my job interview. <laughs> and it was but I know, I mean, but that, the last two movies haven't had that henchman with the gimmick and I kinda like that. Which comes back to that whole balancing act of classic bond to where does he really fit in this real world real world situation we're trying to create. Yeah, I feel like bouncing off of that, I feel like the lot from the, the after image of my brain, because I've, I've only seen the latest ones once, but it seemed like they were trying to move him more in almost of a Jason Bourne direction. Yeah, it took yeah. Him right back to campy, but still kind of Jason Bourne, but not really. So it was just kind of trying to figure out where they were wanting to be. Yeah. I was. Well, oh, no. oh, sorry. No, no. I'm, uh, I'll just. Uh, I'll just say really, uh, really quick. Like one thing that's always bothered me is there's that great moment in Casino Royale where uh, he's almost ready to quit, you know, ready to hang up, ready to live a normal life. 
And I like that this movie came back to that, and not only came back to that, but kind of tried to sum up, you know, his experience and and find some uh, meaning in all of that. No, no, no. It just felt like there's a but like there's a bunch of stuff happening. Like it was just going forward, and then it ended. You know, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of tension for me. The the they didn't explore enough of the, the villain. I think they could have. He was weak. Yeah, in. yeah. Uh, I mean, there were there a couple of. Right. I think. That's just because I love Christoph Waltz. <laughs> I think they waited too long to get into the villain stuff. I mean, it was. He wasn't in there for that much of the they, movie. They tried too hard. They made it too mysterious who the villain and yeah. who the overarching was. Because, I mean, at a certain point, it's like, okay, I don't know what's going on. They don't want me to know what's going on. I just, I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah. the, there weren't enough hints. There wasn't enough kind of a here's what's coming, here's what's coming. It was all just kind of a flashes here and there, they waited yeah, too long to kind of give you the overarching villains, like, we're already at the end. So right, right. It's like, just halfway through, he shows up and says, it was all me! I did all the bad things in all the other movies! Here's, and here's the other thing, that this, this is just something I found funny. They all, they'll show, like, pictures of the characters from the old movies. They barely show anyone from Guam of Solace. It's just yeah. it's, understandable. It's, it's the Shira, it's it's Vesper, it's Silva, it's M, and it's no one from Quantum Solace. Yeah, I, I want to speak really quick to uh, the the idea of like going to his past and also um uh, what uh, oh what, what you're saying about you know Blofeld showing up you know it was me I did all this I I feel like some of that is actually quite profound. Because I think with Skyfall, you know, we look at his past, but it's like the inquiry of his past in Skyfall was he was an orphan. He lived in the house. Santa Claus was there, you know. And, and then, Albert Finney? <laughs> and then you you get to uh, you get to this, and it's like you know, it's not only about his past; it's about you know everything he's been through. There's this continuity from one film, one film to the next. There's the emotional follow of that is felt like when he picks up the the tape with Vesper's interrogation on it. Okay. And then, and then I, I just have one more thing to say, sorry. No, go ahead. And then I, I think, you know, again going into spoilers, like, like how, how amazing is it that the one person who caused all his pain, who did all that to him, and he, he found it in him to spare him at the end, James Bond, uh, who in the books is described as the, the beautiful killing machine. The problem with that, though, is that that assumes a level of knowledge with the text that not everybody's going to have. Like, most of the people who are going to go see this movie are going to be casual viewers. You know, like, oh, there's a new James Bond movie, I guess I better go see it. Like me. It's like, oh, there's a new James Bond movie. It's called Skyfall. I should go see it. I don't remember what happened in Skyfall. I remember him standing on a snowy bank looking at a burned out house. And maybe Emma died. That's literally the only knowledge that I retain of Skyfall. So, you know, looking at the interrogation tape of Vesper, it's like, it's like in the back of my mind I could tell it was supposed to like be meaningful. I don't know who this person is. Like, I have no idea like who any of these people are. Like, I recognize some of the faces on the walls, but it, at a level it's like, okay, oh. it would be really handy if someone could make some offhand comment or remind me who this person is so that I could understand why I'm supposed to be emotional about this. I mean, like, I didn't even, I'm like, where is this, this brother coming from? Like, I, I mean, there was no, there was no level of investment in that relationship because I didn't know that there was a relationship to begin with except, oh, now he's evil and I'm supposed to be sad about it, but I don't know who he is, so I'm not sad. So there was just a lot of that kind of emotional resonance that I think I was supposed to get, but I didn't, because it didn't help me to get there enough. Speaking of unbalance, the score of this was so good, and that Sam Smith song was just terrible. I, I like the song! Oh, no. it's, it's, his voice is just so whiny. Well, it's not just that. It's like, like, at one point he hit this high note. I was like, oh, they got a female. Nope, nope, that is also Sam Smith. And I, and I get that. That works with his music. And I give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, I'm not going to listen to this song because nothing's going to follow Adele's Skyfall. I'll just wait till I see the movie, put it in context. Maybe the flashing pictures will just make this better somehow. It didn't, Lots of it just. Lots of CGI octopuses. <laughs> Lots of octopuses. Oh, it was like, it was like, wow. like hi, and then, hi. And then, like, yeah. uh, it, I just, it didn't have the right impact, but the score, that entire time I was like, 
God, I love this song. It almost took me out of the moment. It was so good, which I think sometimes is a sign of a really good song. I actually wish they had used the fanfare more often than they did, because there were a couple points where I thought, you know, they were getting there, and then they went in another direction with ah, it. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they could have used it more than they did, I think, but it, it did work. It, right. it had a good right. sound. I think it was, it was really loud at some points, but I also have a little bit of a headache, so that might have just been that. It was, <laughs> it was oh, it was music. insanely loud, yeah. <laughs> I thought the score was pretty well done as well, but uh, I just didn't think it matched up with the, what was going on in the screen. There, there was just no attention to match the... the no, the I think like the times it really worked was when it was like, let's look out on the desolate desert. And it had this like cool song, I was like, you know, I don't know if this is like desert music, but yeah, I like the song. <laughs> and it really fit, but definitely not within the moments, it kind of got lost. But like, the big moments. But I really liked it. I think I was like, that's the one thing I took from like, that score was really good. I thought that the music at the very beginning, the intro at the, the Day of the Dead parade was great. Yeah, was yeah, a yeah. A long shot right at the beginning. Yeah, yeah that was ingenious, yeah. yeah. Seeing, yeah. seeing a theme in filmmaking, long shots. <laughs> uh, I guess we can do that. <laughs> Sam Mendes saw Birdman, maybe? Saw Birdman, maybe Gravity. saw an episode of Daredevil. <laughs> I almost wish there were more shots like that in the movie. It's kind of cool. I mean, it, I think if it was a bunch of those shots, we would all have been going Birdman. But at the beginning, it's really cool. It really drew you in. Totally. That first long shot, like, like, oh, they have a cutaway. This is kind of cool. We're now on a <laughs> <laughs> I, get, getting back to what you talked about, about the, the, the continuity, this is... This is this is James Bond. This is James Bond trying to embrace the movies, trying to embrace the 21st century, and the architect of Mar of 21st century filmmaking is Marvel. And so it's they they built this whole thing of of continuity, which is it hasn't been done before because we live in the age of streaming, of where it's like, oh, you need to watch this movie. It's all right. You can just click this button on your remote, pay six dollars, and then you can watch Thor, or Captain oh. America, or whatever. And James Bond is trying to do that, but without the the planning or the forethought. It's just like we get to movie four, and it's like, oh, all these bad things that happened, they were me. They were well, me. Well, I, 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 I feel a little a little bit differently about it. I mean. Uh, uh, Marvel, I, I would never underestimate the influence they've had on on filmmaking. I mean, I think you know they're on top, and you know any, anything on top is gonna gonna filter down, even to really small films, you know, style, tone, etc. But at the same time, uh, continuity between films is a, a really you know long-held tradition, you know, from the Star Wars franchise to the Star Trek oh, franchise to the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But but so but I think it's like you know I I think you know there's a I mean a, like yeah and, I, and I'm not I'm not defending the kind of lack of explanation in Spectre. I'm more thinking in terms of like like I see uh, I I see you know, with James Bond they were trying to do what they did in Star Wars here where each movie is the evolution of uh, the last you know where you have you know. You know something emotional happens, and then you have to deal with it. You know Luke Skywalker. You know learns that Darth Boy, Darth Vader is his father. Then in the next movie, he has to. That's weighing on him, just as the death of these you know various characters is weighing on is Bond in this we film. Need with James Bond though. James Bond never had that. He would see. You would see. Or I'm gonna say I'm not like like on top of all of them. But who's the last one? Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan would beat the bad guy. He'd get the girl almost sleep with the bad girl <laughs> every time and then at the end of the movie you'd see them making out and they were like oh that was fun we did it but <laughs> next I feel movie like... it's all it's like a new thing and it is, it's his own i kind of like that but, but I, I feel like i feel like to expect with that character. But see, I'm okay with that. Every, no, exactly. I mean, that's all right. What we expect out of a James Bond movie is that there is no there is no emotional carryover. It's I mean, it's in the almost I don't want to say sitcom, but it's in that same vein of it's like you just start over with a clean slate every clean slate time and we create a new problem. I mean, Skyfall could have had it all of that same problems within it and then ended it and be like, "All right, well, M's gone. That could have been it, but then gotta start this new thing. I mean, I really feel like they really did try to tie that in, and it worked in Skyfall, and it worked in Quantum of Solace, the fact that he was dealing with his real emotional problems from before. 
that's the only part that worked about a caramel salad. So. <laughs> but this one was like, again, like I said, like tied it up at the end. Guess what? It was all connected to this one thing later. And I'm just Hail like, Hydra. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I feel like you don't need that with Bond. I feel like Bond is perfectly capable of existing in his own world for a movie. And then we come back for the next one because the last one was fun. Well, I want, I want, to, I want to speak to that really quick because I think I'm. Uh, I I I, I give you I give what you're saying like you know like uh, like not you know everything has to be the most profound you know movie going experience you know we go for a lot of reasons you know we go to something like Boyhood to be you know really moved uh, and uh, you know to think you know we go to other movies to um uh, uh, you know just to be diverted you know to escape from our lives but honestly I'm okay with with Bond uh, trying to to reach. Uh, for something different, you know? I, I think it's okay that, you know, I mean, like you said, we had those bonds, you know, and they uh, they did, you know, what you described. I mean, if anything, I think that's all the more reason to try something new, to push it in a new direction, to experiment, you know, especially because the franchise is, you know, so, uh, so old. I mean, I think, and I think, you know, the emotional investment you get in can actually be part of the entertainment and the diversion because, you know, I think we can, you know, debate whether it worked in this film. But you go back to Casino Royale, where he actually had a love interest he cared about. Suddenly the stakes are so much higher, and I think that's exciting.